That night, I really thought I was going to die. Ebola survivor, Dr. Kent Brantley. I was incredibly sick, dehydrated, and was having trouble breathing. And I looked at the nurse who was standing next to my bed, and I said, I don't know how you're going to breathe for me when I quit breathing. In this time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear. Dr. Kent Brantley and his wife, Amber, are our guests on this episode of GPS, God People Stories. I'm Scotty Campbell, along with Phil Fleischman. You know, Scotty, I thought it was especially interesting when we asked Kent what the darkest time spiritually was through this whole ordeal. An amazing contrast between the darkness of the experience and what was going on on the inside in terms of his relationship with God. Right, right, right. And we're going to hear him talk more about that here in just a couple of minutes. GPS. God. People. Stories. Before they knew each other, Kent Brantley and Amber Carroll each knew they wanted to be a missionary. We both uh, attended Abilene Christian University in Abilene, Texas, but we only overlapped there for one year, and we didn't meet during that year. So the summer after... I think you had a girlfriend during that year or something. The summer after I graduated, (laughs) I'm just going to blow right past that. (laughs) The summer after I graduated, um, I went on a mission trip with my church in Indiana to Honduras to work with some missionaries there. And they had three college students working as interns with them for the summer. And one of those interns was Amber Joy Carroll. We knew we were safe to be young enough to dream. That was in 2003. Amber was a pre-nursing student. Kent was getting ready to begin his prerequisites for medical school so he could become a doctor. I chose a career in medicine because... I felt God calling me to be a missionary, and I wanted some skill set that I could use to offer people tangible service in the name of Christ. That's how you change the world. So when we got married, we shared that calling. Kent and Amber got married in 2008. Five years later, they moved to the African nation of Liberia to serve in a small Christian mission hospital in Monrovia, the capital of Liberia. We asked Amber if she was enjoying their experience, if life was good in Liberia. Yeah. It was. We had a lot of fun there. Um, I enjoyed our lifestyle there. There were some hard parts about it, but we really lived pretty comfortably. We had running water and electricity, pretty consistent electricity, really. And we lived and we lived on a beach in West Africa, and it was just gorgeous. And we eat eat fresh fruit, and there were other things we you know watched out for, like. Mosquitoes and snakes and normal missionary stuff. In that home, love it had no end. But it wasn't long before their normal life started to get turned upside down. Just five or six months into our term there, we heard about this Ebola outbreak in Guinea that very shortly after we heard about it had already spread across the border into northern Liberia and within a week a case had come to the Monrovia area. There was just that one case for about two and a half months, but then on June 11th, 2014, Kent remembers the date, Ebola once again raised its head in Monrovia, and this time far more people were infected. Kent was busy at the hospital while Amber got ready to make a scheduled visit back to the United States. The kids and I left on July 20th, to return to Texas for my brother's wedding, which my kids were in. And then my older brother was having his first baby at the same time. So we thought those two events deemed a trip back home. So we stuck with that. (laughs) The kids and I left and Kent planned to join us a week later. That never happened. Amber and the kids left Liberia on Sunday, July 20th. Kent started showing symptoms of Ebola three days later on Wednesday, July 23rd. My exposure came before Amber and the kids left, but I didn't get sick until after they left. So I wasn't contagious while they were around me. And we're really thankful for that. So I woke up feeling bad. I really thought that it was just an upset stomach from the pizza and Tabasco sauce I had eaten the night before. But there was just something wasn't right. I've been working in world's worst Ebola outbreak for seven weeks. And I called my supervisor and said, 
I think I need to stay home this morning and I'm sure it'll blow over by lunchtime. And he said, okay, call me back around lunchtime. Let me know how you're doing. And by noon, I had developed an increasing fever and was feeling worse and feeling fatigued. And it all kind of went downhill from there. Kent called Amber the next day. He called me on Thursday to tell me he was not feeling well and that we, he was going to have to wait the three-day quarantine period for them to test him again for Ebola. And so I knew, I knew he would be tested on Saturday, and I was waiting. I was waiting for his call. Amber was staying at her parents when the call came. And he was just very matter-of-fact and very calm to tell me we got the test result back and I'm positive for Ebola. So how did she take the news? Well, I'd like to say that I, you know, pulled up my big girl <laughs> panties, but I <laughs> I cried a lot. I cried a lot because I knew what that meant and what he had seen in the unit already. And immediately I'm wondering, how am I going to raise these kids on my own? Where will we live? And all the... <laughs> You know, as a mom, you're always planning and thinking ahead, and I I can't stop that. But so that's where that's where I was immediately. Um, I'm thinking I'm facing the rest of my days without my husband and without my kids' dad. So I didn't take that well. Ebola produces horrific symptoms in its victims, and Kent experienced just about all of them. The sickest. I got was on Thursday, July 31st, and that night I really, I thought I was going to die. I was incredibly sick, dehydrated, and was having trouble breathing, and I looked at the nurse who was standing next to my bed, and I said, I don't know how you're going to breathe for me when I quit breathing, because I, I thought I'm about to die of respiratory failure. They had no way to breathe for me. In this time of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear That episode of Labored Breathing, says Kent, that was the darkest time physically of his entire Ebola ordeal. But he says it wasn't the darkest time spiritually. In fact, it was an incredibly good time spiritually. I was facing death, and my first and genuine response was, God, I know you can save me, but even if you don't, I want to be faithful. And that didn't come from me. It was a gift from God that I responded that way. I know that if it had been any other day, any other week, if it happened today, I may not respond the way that I did then. But God gave me what I needed to be faithful to him in that difficult time. And there's nothing spiritually dark about that. So the, the, the darkest spiritual moment for me is probably on this side of it in my recovery, wrestling with the hard questions of why do I get to be evacuated to America and recover from this disease when other people have died and others are continuing to die still and wrestling with those things is much more challenging spiritually than the things that I went through with my illness. What about Amber? What was the darkest time spiritually for her? My answer is really similar to Kent's because I think it has been on this side of it that we've really been able to process and wrestle and ask those hard questions and we have asked some hard questions and I think we're going to be doing that for a long time. One of those hard questions is the why question, but Kent says they know that's not always the best question to ask. And sometimes it's better to ask the question, so what now? I may never have a satisfactory answer to why I got to live while so many other people died, but 
I am alive and therefore I have a responsibility. I will answer the question of what are you going to do with your life now, whether I want to answer it or not. The way I live will answer that question. So that's, people ask me, do you have survivor guilt? And I say, no, I, I think I have survivor responsibility. And I've got to use my life in a way that's meaningful and helpful to other people. Kent Brantley had given his life to Jesus years earlier, but his battle with Ebola drew him even closer to God. Would you like to be closer to God? To experience his love in a holy way. You don't need to contract a deadly disease to do that. You simply have to surrender your life to Jesus. We can tell you more at BillyGrahamRadio.org. Click on Grow Your Faith at the top of the page. BillyGrahamRadio.org. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. I told um, Ken yesterday that he's responsible for one of the worst weeks of my life. (laughs) He said it wasn't much better for him. Kent Bradley's boss, Franklin Graham, on the experimental drug ZMAP that likely helped to save Kent's life. The ZMAP came by road, canoe, a Samaritan's Purse plane, and then a taxi, I guess, with someone from the Democratic Republic of the Congo and uh, this trunk that's frozen to like 200 degrees below zero or something. All of this just didn't happen. There's a God, okay? There's a God who organizes these things. And down to the details. And on that Thursday, when we thought Kent was not going to make it, and he didn't think he was going to make it, the Z-map was given. Whether it was the Z-map, whether it was prayer, whether it was the unit of blood that he received from that 14-year-old boy, whether it was any one of those or all of those, it's all because of God's hand. Because there is no hope outside of him. These bodies we have, they're all going to quit one day. We're all going to face death one day. But do you know where you're going to spend eternity? Are you sure? If you're not, you can be sure today. You can call upon the name of our God and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to put your faith and trust in Him. He loves us. He does. Now back to the hosts of GPS, Scotty Campbell and Phil Fleischman. So it was a couple weeks after our interview with uh, Kent and Amber, I had to go to the doctor for something. And, you know, you're in the doctor's office. And when you're checking in, the receptionist there just asks a series of routine questions. And, you know, in the last year or two, I guess, included in those routine questions are, have you been to West Africa or been in contact with anybody with Ebola who's been infected with Ebola? And so I'm answering her questions without even thinking about it. I just say no. And then I'm like, oh, no, wait. I was in contact with someone who had Ebola. I, I met with uh, Dr. Kent Brantley. Well, this poor receptionist, I mean, literally, she panicked. She you went into a reaction. Full, yeah, full on panic. She like threw her hands up. She was saying, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And uh, so she called over one of her coworkers. This was starting to cause a scene there behind the, the counter at the doctor's office. She called over her coworker, and the coworker was much calmer. And we realized, you know, Dr. Brantley was all better. And it had been weeks and weeks since he had been sick. And it had been a couple of weeks since I had seen him. So all was good. But that poor receptionist, she was so embarrassed because she said, I never expected anyone to say yes to no, that question. No, of course, that's a question everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, it pro- probably good that you didn't sneeze. That you, that you didn't. <laughs> hey, the Decision America Tour is coming to your state capital. Franklin Graham will hold a short rally in every state capital next year. He wants to encourage Christians to boldly live out their faith and to prayerfully consider how their vote can be used to uphold biblical values. You can find out more about the tour, including how you can get involved right now by going to DecisionAmericaTour.com. That's DecisionAmericaTour.com. 
GPS, God People Stories. That's what you're listening to. And it is on Facebook. Now, we would send you a friend request if we could, but you know it doesn't really work that way. But you can like us. All you need to do is search for Billy Graham Radio on Facebook. That's Billy Graham Radio. And that's also our website, BillyGrahamRadio.org. You can use either one, our Facebook or our website, to share this episode of GPS and your comments. Let us know what you thought of this episode or if you have ideas for other interviews. Yeah, you could also comment on the great music we used in this episode. It all came from the Newsboys from their album Restart. Now that wraps up this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I'm Scotty Campbell. GPS is an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. We